I'm delighted to join you from the magnificent main auditorium today to introduce a specially commissioned piece being performed for the very first time reflecting today's discussion. The staging incorporates 244 candles, one in memory of each of the women who have been killed by violence since 1996. Performing her poem, Think, I'm honoured to introduce Dublin poet Natalia O'Flaherty. Every morning I take myself through a short stretch of park. Darkened and dim, footsteps often echo behind me and my chest tightens and pace quickens until I get out the gates and realise I've been listening to my own feet and fear, heartbeat pumping in my ears. And I thank God it's not some stranger stepping in to hurt or harm or steer me clear of my way. And on the mornings my shadow doesn't even show and the leaves sit still in the trees, and there's nothing to startle or steer my thoughts to fear, I think. I think about maybe taking a longer way next time, and sometimes I do. I think about the keys splayed between my knuckles and the way I would run if I had to. I think about the safety alarm my friend bought online, and my one that will soon arrive. I think about how loud I could scream, and whom I hear, and if it would make a difference. I think about blame and personal responsibility and what they would say if anything were to happen to me. Would I be innocent in my fate? Or should I have known better, tried harder, been quicker out the gate? I think about the women and girls who think like me. I think about the conversations we share and the plans we'd make if we were free from threat and danger. If we could trust in the kindness of strangers. If we could live in the world instead of just in the daylight. Then I think about the women and girls who taught like me, the women and girls who lost, whose keys didn't cut deep or whose echoed steps weren't alone on the street. I think of the women and girls who didn't even see it coming, who did everything right, or the ones who walked alone at night in defiance of the drills and the rules and the way we've been taught to use our bodies and lives to shield ourselves from violence. I think about the women and girls who lost, who are lost, who we've lost. I think about the way they'll be remembered and how shallow that can feel compared to the lives they should have, could have had. I think of the memorials and the silent vigils and how none of it can hold a candle to the light and love and life of the women and girls taken from us by those who had no right. And I wonder if we can ever find relief in thoughts and I doubt it. So instead I'll try to talk, to use my voice, to raise the issue, share my fears with others, and not just with the women and girls who already know, who are well aware. Instead I'll try and share and speak to those who shy away from the struggles we face every day, from the men who truly have the say in change. It's not all men, but it's on all men to educate their sons instead of protect their daughters. The responsibility doesn't lie with me or women or girls, it lies with everyone collectively talking and thinking, facing the reality of what it means to be womanly, vulnerable, targeted. I can only do so much, but together we can shift the narrative away from God lover, God blesser, God rester. <laughs> 